Ride ain't over yet. My man. All right, guys, just about a week and a half ago, we had Thor Ragnarok hitting theaters, and I love that film. And now we have another comic book adaptation. I got my Superman decal. I got my Batman decal. And this movie is highly anticipated for fans all across the world. So how did it turn out? Well, let's get into it. And my name is Brendan Keith Avery, and this is just my opinion. All right, guys, I want to thank you so much for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Justice League. I really do appreciate it. But before we get into the review, help your boy out. Go ahead and click that subscribe button. Become one of my subscribers. Go ahead and also click the bell so you can be notified when I make uploads. And also give me that thumbs up. Let's see if we can get this video to 100 likes. Now, we are finally here with Justice League. This is the fifth film in the entire DCEU. You know, uh, to be honest with you, the DCEU kind of started out to a rough start, you know, with Man of Steel directed by uh, uh, Zack Snyder. They came out in 2013. Of course, I have my copy right here on 3D Blu-ray. And I actually love this film. You know, this is a very defensive film. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Like I said, I am one of the people that loved it. And honestly, while it is not in my top 10 comic book movies anymore, and I will be talking about that later, I still feel that as far as the action is concerned with Superman, man going against Zod at the very end that that is some of the best action and I'm only speaking action alone some of the best action ever in any superhero movie and then right after that you know unfortunately I feel that in my opinion the studio jumped the gun giving us one of the most beloved stories in the comic books of all time and that is Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and I saw this as well just like everybody else of course I have it right here on a blu-ray and 4k and the theatrical version of this was extremely disappointing disappointing to me i think i gave the theatrical version like a 5.5 6 out of 10 it was very disappointing but you know the extended version that we have here the ultimate edition i did like that a lot better they did fix a number of the mistakes it still has some problems i'm not going to get into that now you know but this is number two now suicide squad that came out right after that i don't have that on copy because i hated that film for the most part i thought it was just trash garbage especially with the little monster doing this at the end i don't know what they were thinking I mean, I am not looking forward to a Suicide Squad 2. So, I mean, we had Man of Steel that came out. You know, that was kind of, you know, like half and half. Then we had BVS, which was disappointing, and Suicide Squad. So, you know, 2017 wasn't looking that hopeful for the DCU. But no, Patty Jenkins came through, and she gave us this lovely film right here, Wonder Woman, of course, starring Gal Gadot. And I really did love this movie. This was a great film. I mean, you know, it kind of, I, I could nitpick it here and there, but for the most part, this is a very entertaining film. I love this pretty much. I was highly entertained. These Amazon and this movie were throwing down, and I just, you know, pretty much loved it. And I skipped over something. I was just talking about BVS right here. You know, this is based off of the... Uh, well, it's kind of adapted off the Batman, the Dark Knight Returns, uh, which I have here right here on Blu-ray. And um, they, they tried to take, you know, this and make it into a film. And this is much better. You know, if you haven't seen this, I strongly suggest you get a copy of it or watch it any way you can. You know, legally, I'm not going to promote any bootleg or anything like that. So with Man of Steel being defensive, you know, BVS being disappointing and then a lot of people not liking Suicide Squad. You know, Wonder Woman did come through and, you know, bring some light to this uh, cinematic universe or whatever. And, um, you know, there's a lot riding on Justice League. I mean, some are considering or saying that this can make or break the entire DCEU. And I'll be honest with you, you know, uh, just going into this, my expectations, you know, I, I was just kind of going in thinking I was going to be, well... I, I, I was thinking I was going to be let down. You know, I mean, I think Zack Snyder is a uh, great director if he ha has nothing to do with the story. Um, and, you know, he did have to do with the story with Man of Steel and, of course, with uh, Justice League, which we're talking about right now. You know, he is a great visual director, but I, I don't think he is the best. Uh, and I'm clipping right here. Let me turn this down. I don't think that he is the best uh, storyteller. You know, I just think that he should just stick to the visuals or whatever. And this movie is being directed by him, Zack Snyder. Uh, also, 
due to unfortunate circumstances, he had to part away from the production. And so they brought Josh Whedon in, who was already kind of working with Warner Brothers and DC Comics to, you know, uh, bring some levity to the film, give it some more light. Because some people complain that, you know, the DCEU is too, too dark, which doesn't make sense to me because the Dark Knight trilogy was dark, you know. But anyway, but, you know, uh, Josh Whedon came through and, uh, you know, he did some reshoots and whatnot and, you know, added some scenes here and added some scenes there. And I'll just go ahead and say that while I was watching the film, you know, there, it was it was a clear indication on to which director was, you know, directing what part of the movie. Now, don't worry. Don't freak out. I'm not saying that it was bad or noticeable in a negative way. You know, I noticed it because, you know, I just kind of like watch a lot of movies and, you know, follow their style. Of course, you know, Zack Snyder did, um, you know, 300. Josh Whedon did the Avengers. But, as you know, as far as the visual, I can tell I was like, OK, I can tell that this was a scene done by Zack Snyder. And when it came to like dialogue and character interactions and whatnot, I can tell that this was something done by Josh Whedon. But in my opinion, in this movie, all of that, whether them dipping back and forth in their directing styles, it flows seamless to me and it's not an issue. And I talked to I mean, uh, just to let you know, I uh, the Twitter reactions, the social media reactions came out last week and I checked them all out. And for the most part, it was what I expected it to be. You know, people were saying that the characters was fun and the team up. But, you know, somebody was once saying that the story is thin and then, you know, like narratively, it's a mess. And I'll touch on that. But for the most part, I do not agree with most of those uh, Twitter reactions and social uh, media responses. Overall, guys, I really did enjoy this film and it is a lot of fun. I was very, very surprised. Now, that may be the case because I was going into this with low expectations. And sometimes, you know, that's the best way to go into a movie. You know, me being, you know, I'm, I'm getting a little older. I've been loving comic book movies and adaptations for a long time. And I just remember how, you know, excited I was for Avengers Age of Ultron. And I was let down by that, you know, but, you know, I went in with low expectations with this, just thinking, like, OK, I'm pretty sure you know they're going to have a few good moments here there's going to be some action but you know i'm going to be disappointed with the characters the character react uh, the way they react to each other in their interactions and the story may not be that great but i'm proud to say guys that i was completely wrong when it came to that because one of the best things of this movie of course just like the social media responses last week are the characters and the way that they interact with each other and right now as i'm talking to you i'm kind of struggling still trying to determine which character I like the best but just jumping right into this movie like one thing that I like I, I was worried about is the um, the CEO of Warner Brothers had a mandate that the film had to come under two hours I think that's a horrible idea if you make that mandate after the film has already been shot if the director knows this before it's being shot okay they can you know make it work there you know with within that window but I was really let down I'm like man this is a Justice League movie all these movies are bad we're gonna need time for this to develop I mean it needs to come in like two hours and 20 minutes you know something like that that you know not you know well, i was gonna talk about something else but you know i was very worried but guys you can put that you can not you can work you can put that issue to a side you don't have to worry about that and like i said one of the best thing in this movie was the characters every hero in this movie was a badass every hero in this movie got a time to shine and i really got to see all of their abilities and their powers in different scenarios and situations and it was just making me smile ear to ear when i was in the theater and i also saw this at amc and imax and to be honest with you it really wasn't true imax it's something to what i consider a limax you know uh, i'm filming this and i reside in dallas texas and in my opinion there's only one uh, theater in the whole metroplex that has a true imax screen or whatever but you know it was still enjoyable you know the picture quality was there the sound was there and i do recommend if you see this movie try to see it on the biggest loudest screen as possible um because that just will enhance your experience while you're viewing it guys but every hero in this movie was throwing down i mean like you know uh let, let's who gonna talk about first let's talk about batman batman played by ben affleck of course i loved him as batman in my opinion he is the best batman that we have ever seen on screen i do like him more than michael keaton i do like more than christian bell he is the best batman to me and in this movie he is a true leader i mean he is trying to rally the team together as you already know in the trailers and i like how he was doing that i mean he was just going around not wasting any time just like like you saw in the trailers. like look hey we putting the team together 
the bad guys are coming. You know why? Because here goes his head right here. We need to come together. Okay, no, you're not ready. Okay, well, you think about it. Here's my number. I'm going to go holler. Somebody else call me. Now, he didn't really do that. He didn't just say those words exactly like that. But something that I did like about his character was, and, you know, him being in this movie is he didn't, he did not waste any time. He was just cutting straight to the chase. Just like, hey, we don't have any time here. We need to get this together. And just with his character as well, we didn't get to see a ton of hand to hand fighting like we did in Batman v Superman and their warehouse. But that's OK. Don't worry. The action that we did get to see from Batman, you know, it was still nice. It was still impressive. And something that we kind of didn't get to see earlier in past films is, you know, he was somewhat more of a detective in this film. Because, of course, besides Batman being like a master ninja assassin, you know, he is a grandmaster detective as well. Of course, he's a billionaire. So we got to see all of his gizmo and gadgets and you know what something that i liked in this film is you know we kind of get to see him you know updating his armor and whatnot you know when he's fighting the parademons which is in the trailer i'm not going to spoil anything for you here you know he has an interaction with them you know here and there and of course he's taking notes he's taking middle notes he's like, okay if, I, if i'm going to face them again i need to update my suit a little bit now i'm not trying to overhype it saying that there was like a bunch of armors and stuff like that no i'm just talking about little modifications on his suit that you saw you know from bvs but i loved him I love how he was going around recruiting the scenes, uh, recruiting the scenes and recruit, recruiting all the characters like his interactions with Aquaman played by Jason Momoa. I like that as well, because at first, you know, they were having kind of like some hero talk in the movie. But then they just kind of put all that aside and they just start chopping it up and talking to each other like normal human beings. You know what I'm saying? Just like talking to the, you know, just like a regular conversation that like me and you would have or something like that. And that really spoke to me. I was like, OK, wow. You know, like these are superheroes. One is a billionaire. One is half at Lanian and uh, the other half human but I feel like I can relate to them or whatever and so that is something that I really noticed at the very beginning of the movie that I liked as well and you know since I did bring up Aquaman and Jason Momoa I will talk about that as well Jason Momoa Aquaman he was badass as well too he looked beautiful in his full armored Atlantean suit with that trident that can supposedly pierce Superman's uh, skin and I'm not talking about in the movie I'm just talking about in the comics in general or whatever but um, you know I like him as well he looked real badass in that movie not in, in this movie right here kind of before this movie started when they kind of started casting um aquaman i was kind of disappointed because i wanted arthur curry to have somewhat of a, a brownish blondish hair so with him seeing a jason momoa as like dark uh, brown or black i was kind of turned off but i didn't care about that in this movie it's perfectly fine uh jason momoa was a badass and he was even able to uh, land a few jokes as well too and uh, and i'm not even saying funny moments i'm saying jokes and they landed as well so i mean you got batman and uh, aquaman and this movie you know they did a great job somebody else so the next character i want to talk about is diana prince wonder woman played by gal gadot she did a great job as well like i said i loved her in wonder woman i loved her in uh batman v superman but i loved her even more in this movie justice league because she had a, she was strong physically in the past films and had a great moral compass but you can see that in past this past June when Wonder Woman came out, you know, she was a little naive. Like, what do you mean, Aries? And we have to save everybody. I mean, I completely understand where she's coming from. But, you know, that was like, what, 100 years ago. And she's matured, you know, dramatically now in this film. And is just, you know, like, you know, her, you, you can just tell that she kind of just grew up and she's adapted to the world or whatever. And as strong as she was in the past films and morally and uh spiritually and you know physically and all of that good stuff she's even stronger now or whatever i'm like seriously she there was one scene in this movie to where she had a white suit on you know like like a normal person would wear not you know an uh, amazonian or whatever i was like my goodness gracious you are beautiful she was just a beautiful woman and she's stronger too i mean i was just loving like one little scene right here where she's blocking bullets and trying to save the day while you saw in the trailers when they were had some henchmen going to like a bank or whatever and they you know had the guns of course in the trailers i'm not spoiling anything she went there and in the movie she kicked butt and i liked all of that um i wasn't even paying attention to who i was sitting to uh initially when i first sat down but i was sitting uh to this little girl or, or whatever right next to me or whatever and when wonder woman popped on the screen the little i, I decided at the corner of my eye the little girl was just so happy she was just going like this or whatever and that got me even more excited or whatever was to come and so you know wonder woman was dope too there is something that i did not like about her character that i'll talk about towards the end of this review 
too when I'm talking about, you know, some of the things, the little things that I did not like, you know, but of course right now we're talking about the good stuff. Now the next character I want to talk about, don't want to talk about Cyborg, I don't want to talk about the Flash. I want to talk about the Flash or Cyborg. Let's talk about uh, Cyborg. Okay, played by Ray Fisher, who is a Broadway actor. I hated his introduction in BVS. I just thought that was garbage and just stupid. And they were just shoehorning it in with the mother box. And I'm just like, oh, Lord, this is just getting on my dang nerve. Like, what are they doing? Nope. I did not feel that way at all uh, with uh, Victor Stone, with um, uh, Ray Fisher in this movie as Cyborg. I love this character, like real talk. I mean, he had this hoodie on or whatever, you know, and he had all the lights and the cybernetics and it was just something about him that was just so cool, calm and collective, just about his aura or whatever. Like he was just such a humble character. And I like humble characters. I mean, you have so many different personalities and a lot of these personalities didn't like clash as well. But, you know, just seeing what well, something I really liked about his character, and I'm not going to spoil it, is when it came to his armor. I mean, this movie is a, a introduction to his character. And what was fascinated to me is throughout the movie, his armor, his cybernetics is continuing to evolve and he's learning more about himself as the film goes on so as he's learning about himself you're learning about himself and i really don't want to spoil it for you because i mean there are just like a lot of surprises and there are even more surprises about his character sorry about that but that is just something that i really did love that i really did enjoy you know he just something about his subtle nature in the film and just him being you know calm or whatever he wasn't screaming like oh, i'm the black guy or anything like that and the reason I said that because I, I saw a while ago in like a forum, I think it was on Reddit. Somebody was like, I hope he doesn't act like this and that, you know, you know, you don't got to worry about that. You know, he was one of my favorites, you know, in this movie. And I'll talk about actually how his armor look or whatever. Of course, you can tell it was CGI, but I'm going to talk about that later. And um, one thing about I have one more character to talk about uh, prominently. Uh, well, on the Justice League or whatever. Uh, and I bet y'all guys are wondering, like, wait, what about this character? I'm not going to spoil nothing for you here. But one thing about um, the DCEU is the movies for the most part. Well, no, Wonder Woman has some jokes in it. I don't think Man of Steel and uh, Batman v Superman did. But this money, th this money, this movie was funny. It had a lot of jokes in it. And I was laughing and they all landed. There was not one joke or funny moment or whatever. So I was like, oh, that wasn't funny. That was corny. No, I enjoyed all of them. Um, all of the characters had uh, funny moments as well, whether it was in battle or outside of battle, just having dialogue. But of course, the funniest character in the whole movie was the Flash. Um, he is just not a comic relief. You know, he did uh serve a worthy purpose on the team and i did appreciate everything that he had to offer you know but he was just funny because he is kind of like the like the teenager or the little kid of the team and of course as you saw in the trailers when batman was or bruce wayne was in his uh room not his room but sitting in his chair and he threw the batarang and it slowed down and he caught it and all that and he need friends and, and whatnot you know like you kind of you immediately understand where he's coming from because the flash is so dang fast and you know he can't relate to anybody and so just kind of seeing him you know in this movie you know finally able to kind of converse with people on his level that was fun and i really liked that and one of the tra uh, scenes in the trailer where he was like hey guys i know that you are you guys are just kind of used to going with uh you know uh, engage you're used to engaging in battle i just kind of run fast and push people out the way that was like one of the best lines in this movie because he was really nervous during that time. And I don't want to tell you why he was nervous at that point in time because I want you to be surprised like I was. But I understood 100% where he was coming from. If I was in his shoes, I would have reacted the exact same way. And that's just another example of how me, I was able to rate to his character with his character being a superhero. I'm not, not, I'm not a superhero, if, if you noticed or whatever. I'm just a normal human being. So, you know, for them able to put you in the shoes, the, the writing, whether it was Josh Whedon, Chris Terry, or Zack Snyder uh, the way they were able to put you in the shoes of uh, you know these characters with them being superheroes or whatever it was dope I loved it it was great and I think you will too now the next thing that I love I, I talked about the characters I talk and there's some characters I'm not going to mention. Of course, I'm not spoiling something. You know, there are a lot of surprises in this movie. I talked about the characters, what I should like. And I loved all the interactions between them. That was dope as well, too. But then we got to talk about the action. Man, hold up. The action is super dope as well. Like, seriously, I am completely satisfied when it comes to the action. I'm nearly as satisfied, probably even more satisfied with the action more than I was with Man of Steel. Because I think when I in, uh, uh, opened up this review, I was... I don't remember what I said. Yeah, I'm just so excited right now. But the action was super dope. Like, seriously, 
every character was engaged in all the battles where they was either on the uh, good side or the bad side in the Justice League or with Steppenwolf, of course, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. But man, they were just throwing down. Nobody was on the sideline. I got to see everybody's abilities. You know, I got to see the Flash running here and there, zooming in. Da -da -da -da. I got to see Batman and all his gadgets, him doing some hand-to-hand -hand combat as well. It wasn't as much as um, uh, BVS, but it was still enough. I got to see Cyborg with all his cybernetics doing this and using this technology and this blaster here and there. I got to see Princess Diana with her little bands, with her shield, with her sword, with her lasso of truth. And we got to see Aquaman with his uh, trident or whatever. I mean, it was lovely. I was eating it all up. And let me talk. So the action was dope. From beginning to end, I love all of that. Like, seriously, the action is great. If you wanted to go in here and see some uh, butt-kicking action in different scenes, you are not going to be disappointed. Some other the action that I want to talk about when it comes to uh, Steppenwolf and the Amazons. Because towards the beginning of the film, you, you know this from the trailers. And I keep saying this, I'm not going to spoil anything. But you know this from the trailers that, you know, the Amazons are holding a mother box or whatever, right? And Steppenwolf comes and he tries to steal one of the... Uh, one of the mother boxes from the Amazonians or whatever. That was an introduction to Steppenwolf. And I loved it, man. Like Steppenwolf came on the scene like, yeah, I'm Steppenwolf. Fuck with me. He didn't say that exactly, but that's just kind of the aura and the presence that he had. And I was like, damn, that's a hell of an entrance or whatever. And you ain't joking around. Like he did not mind knocking somebody's head off. And it seemed like he did a few times or whatever because, the Amazon, you know, they was fighting and he was fighting and it was just lovely. And then the action from the Amazons, I mean, like they have primitive weapons like swords, bows and arrows and whatnot, but they still make significant use of these little devices. I mean, like, uh, like the mother box in this movie is a MacGuffin. And there was one character that had one bow and like two arrows and a rope. And what she was able to do that with Steppenwolf, this super badass, I was so impressed. I was like, damn, you are creative. That is like, you are using your brain. And I love characters that use their brain. And these Amazonians were just using every resource, like teaming up with this tag team, uh, get away, uh, keep away or whatever with Steppenwolf. I was like, this is great. And like the, everybody was engaged, just going all at it or whatever on, on the Amazonian side. And then uh, with Steppenwolf, like I, I was just really impressed with it. I, I love people that was given a, a, a true effort. And these Amazonians were, it was dope. I loved it. I mean, like, you know, I'm just like eating it all up. Like watching them, like, yeah, yeah. You know, I was actually doing that in the movie. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, so man, like everybody was like everybody in this whole theater was like geeking out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I saw this uh, Monday night or whatever. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I I love that. You know, something else that I like with the action is when they was talking about Stephen Wolf. Of course, they kind of gave you a little bit of brief of backstory of what happened, like you know, thousands of years ago. So we can we can kind of know who he was. There was like an action scene there or whatever, and there was some characters that was popping up in there. And I was like, oh snap! You know, I kind of had a feeling that this character may have popped up, but I wasn't sure. But when they popped up, I was really okay. I know who you are. I hope we get to see you in the future. And then you had some other characters with some abilities. I was like, oh snap! Who are you? Who are you? Because I want to know now because what you're doing right now on screen or whatever is badass and I'm liking it or whatever. Like it, it was dope. You know, I, I, I was liking that or whatever. So, OK, OK, OK. Let me calm down. Let me I got, I got my notes right here or whatever. I didn't I didn't want to miss nothing or whatever. So we talked about that. The characters, the interaction, dialogue, action, flashbacks, talked about Steppenwolf. So, yeah, we gave my intro, talked about expectations, director, DCU, overall impressions. We got the characters, how they interacted. We got the action, flashbacks and the Steppenwolf. So this is all the good stuff stuff now of course every movie is not perfect and we have to talk about the bad so let me just touch on the bad real quick before i close this thing out first bad thing i want to talk about is this well i don't want to say bad is the story is a little paper thin um now when i walked out of this movie i did not say to myself i mean man the story sucked that story was trash no i did not say it at all the story is very simple. It, it is simple as hell. It's very thin. I, I did kind of say to myself, okay, you know, it, it could have been a little better. You know, they could have added a little more meat to it, just add a little more substance. But I, I still, I'm, as I'm talking to you this now, and I've had nearly 24 hours to think about this movie because I was like, do I want to talk about it now when I got back? I was like, no, I want to sleep on this thing. I want to sleep on this mug. 
you know, they could have gave you more with the story, but the same, I'm not disappointed with the story. I'm just saying that they could have added more to it. I, I, in no way, shape, or form, was I was like, this story sucks. This story is weak. This story was whack. No, I did not have those emotions at all, but, you know, they could have just added a little bit more bone to the story. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is Steppenwolf himself is the CGI, uh, when he was kind of shot far away, that was fine. But when they zoomed up on his face, it was, it was trash. It, it was pretty bad. I'm not going to lie or whatever. I mean, it didn't like ruin the movie for me, but I was just like, okay, guys, I mean, was y'all rushing? Y'all run out of money or something? Like, where did the money go? Y'all should have put it in his face because y'all didn't put it in his face. Y'all put it somewhere else. I don't know what happened, but the CGI on his face was not the best. Uh, something else about Steppenwolf is while he was great on screen to look at while he was fighting and beating ass left and right throughout the whole movie. And he was really beating ass with that axe that heated up or whatever. His motivation like was kind of like, dude, okay, like... Do you want to destroy the world? Do you want to take over the world? Like, while you're here in the first place, you know, that's just kind of one of the things that I didn't like about BVS as well with Lex Luthor and the mother boxes and things like that. They cut a scene out towards the end of this. I'm pretty sure y'all have already seen it, but I was just kind of saying to myself, okay, like, who? He kept referring to somebody as, like, his mother. And, like, when you, I don't know much about Steppenwolf, but when I did a little research, he's the uncle of Darkseid. And on Apocalypse, at one point in time, he was trying, he was like the leader of one of the armies when they were trying to take over New Genesis or whatever. Uh, and so there was somebody he was referring to. And I was like, who are you talking about? And also, just like, he kept, how do I want to explain this without spoiling it? But, he kept coming onto certain scenes and leaving, and I wasn't truly understanding how he was doing that. It didn't ruin the film for me, but I was just kind of like, how are you doing that? Like, is this an ability of yours or using some device? I don't know. But his face was bad with the CGI, and also, uh, you know, his motivation could have been there a little bit better. And I also talked about the, the story being just a little thin. Also, something I want to talk about is when it comes, this is the introduction to um, uh, Jason Momoa as Aquaman. So we did get to see a brief glimpse of Atlantis, but we didn't get to see enough. It was very brief. I mean, what we saw was cool, but I wanted a lot more from Atlantis. Now, there was um, there was Themyscira in this movie, of course, with the Amazons, but we got to see all the Themyscira in Wonder Woman. So when we got brief glimpses of Themyscira in this movie, Justice League, okay, I was already satisfied because I already knew more. But when I was seeing Amazon down in the ocean, I was just like, man, I want more. And it was just too brief or whatever. So I wanted a little bit more there. And when I think about it now, this is where I'm thinking like, man, if the movie was 20 or 30 minutes longer, maybe we could have got more, you know, but I don't want to say that the film was kind of rushing through, but it, I don't want to say that because if, if, if I say it was rushing, I, it's just that feels like I'm saying that the editing was bad because editing wasn't bad at all either. Like it wasn't BVS. It was Chop City. That was trash. But I do wish I would have saw a little bit more uh, from Atlantis. And the last gripe that I will talk about is when it comes to Gal Gadot and her acting. Now, Gal Gadot, in my opinion, she did a great job in BVS with the acting and she did a great job in Wonder Woman with the acting. And in Justice League, for the most part, she did a great job with the acting, too, besides one scene towards the beginning when she was trying to interact with uh, Cyborg that she was trying to emote and show emotion and it wasn't good i was like oh, oh. it was kind of cringeworthy or whatever you know but you know that was only maybe 45 seconds of the whole movie so 45 seconds out of a movie that's you know an hour and 59 minutes and i got imdb right here well it says two hours and one minute right here and that of course includes the um that includes the credits or whatever but it was just a one little brief scene like you know she was talking to cyborg or whatever trying to get him on the team and you know it was fine but when she tried when they when cyborg was giving his emotion that was fine he ray fish is a great actor but when she was trying to emote i was like okay that's just kind of whack so i talked about all the good the bad i said the story is thin a little bit the motivation for the villain wasn't there his face was bad with cgi i wanted more from um wonder woman's acting and more for atlantis now as far as the rest goes, uh, let's talk about Jim Gordon, played by J.K. Simmons. He was brief in the movie as well, and uh, he did a great job. Uh, there are a few characters in this movie that pops up that you may be able to predict. I'm not going to spoil it to you here, but when they popped up, I was like, man, I loved it. When this one character popped up, it was it was right before the third act of the film, kind of say towards the second end of the second act. And I love this film. I mean, I love this part. Man, it was nice. 
man, they had some nice battles. They had some nice trash talking that uh, kind of delved back into past films. And I was loving it. Everybody doing this scene was geeking out. Like, oh, snap. Oh, shit. Well, excuse my profanity. But, like, everybody was geeking out doing this scene. Just like, man, it, it was... <laughs> I'm I, I'm geeking out right now because I I can't wait to see it again because it was just that dope or whatever. So this one character just popped up and his introduction, uh, you know, during this scene, it it, it was quite nice. And um, you know, I'm coming to the end. Also, guys, there are two post credit scenes and both of them are lovely as hell. Please, please, please make sure you stay all the way to the very end. If you do not stay to the very end, you're gonna be angry. You're going to be, if you don't stay to the very end and you find out what they were, especially the last one, you're going to be angry. I, I trust me or whatever. Like the first one is kind of more of a fun, you know, uh, scene or whatever that all comic book films are going to love. And then like when it comes on, you know, you're going to be reacting like, yes! Yes! and man, that's kind of how I was reacting. And then the last film kind of just lets you know, like what is coming further. And I'm spitting everywhere further in the DCEU. And then you probably going to react like, oh! Yeah, and that's how everybody in the whole theater was reacting just like that or whatever. It was nice. So make sure you stay. I mean, like, seriously, guys, overall, man, um, I love this film. It was fantastic. I had so much fun with it. I mean, like, I, everybody was giving an applause. This is a great movie. I, I love this film. Like, real talk. I mean, of course, I did talk about my nitpicks, but I went in with low expectations, and I was blown away. I mean, I love these characters. I love how they were interacting, and this action, I, I, it was great. I mean, seriously. And the story wasn't bad, either. It, it just could have been, you know, they could have added more to it. I mean, like, seriously. I, I am like, oh, man. I, I, it's, I've been struggling these last 24 hours just trying to you know, really determine where I'm going to rate this film. And I'm trying to be, I'm trying to be unbiased as well, because like, I, I really didn't enjoy it. Man, like, seriously, this may not be the best movie in the DCEU, but I can uh, easily say with all confidence that this is, I'm so sorry, that this is uh, my most favorite movie in the entire DCEU. Like, it, this is my most, I, I, it's my, I, it's my, I can't even talk. I'm so excited. It's my most favorite other than, uh, man, it's better than BVS. And um, it's better than BVS and Suicide Squad by far. It's even better than Man of Steel. There will be a debate on who likes, you know, this or Wonder Woman more. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and, well, while... Man, it's like I think Wonder Woman was a better film, but I still had a this this movie was more entertaining than Wonder Woman to me. Like it, it because like the the story with Wonder Woman is stronger, you know. And, man, you know, but you know, guys, I, I love this movie. I I cannot wait to see it again. I already bought tickets because you know I got lucky to see this. Uh, you know, Monday night I already have tickets to go see this in a real IMAX screen, even though I don't think it was filled with IMAX cameras. Thursday night, I cannot wait to see this again. I cannot wait to own this movie. Y'all are gonna love this movie. Like seriously, well, I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to overhype it too because you know I went in with low expectations, guys. But I really did enjoy this movie. I mean, I've been talking for nearly thirty or uh, over thirty minutes now. Like it, it's a great movie, and I I, I love it. I I am very impressed with what they did right here. Um, you know, seriously, there are some scenes that were in, there's like 50,000 trailers for this movie. There are some scenes that are in the trailers that are not in the movie and that's okay. I used to complain about that a lot, but given the circumstances, I'm not going to cry about it. I'm not going to whine about it, but I really did enjoy this movie. And, uh, I, I'm just saying to myself, what would I rate this movie out of a one out of 10? And I was just bouncing back and forth. I want to give it an 8.5. I want to give it a nine. I want to give it an 8.5 and I'm going to give it a nine. And I gotta take I gotta take my fanboy out of fanboy isms out of it. I gotta be unbiased because I'm I'm a big hard comic book fan. I mean I even got the dang uh DC uh encyclopedia right here. You know, I got the uh I got the Marvel encyclopedia right here as well too. So I am a comic book fanatic, you know, as you can see or whatever. And because the story was a little thin because the CGI was bad and all those other things I listed. I'm going to, if I had to rate Justice League out of a 1 out of 10, I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Yes, an 8.5 out of 10. I think I gave Wonder Woman a 9 out of a 10, but it, because, you know, it, it, it was able to accomplish more technical things a lot better in that film. But still, this is my most favorite movie out of the whole um, DCEU. 
And uh, I cannot wait to see it again. And I cannot wait to see, you know, what you guys are going to think as well. And I'm kicking myself right now under this table because I hope I didn't leave anything out. But guys, that is just my opinion. Have you seen Justice League yet or do you want to see it? Have I turned you on? Have I turned you off? Do you agree with me or do you disagree with me? Let me know in the comment section below. Let's get this conversation going and keep it flowing. If you like this video, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. And if you don't like the video, that's fine. Just leave me a comment below why and still give me the thumbs up since you're watching this on youtube go ahead and subscribe to my youtube channel so you can get all the content that i have to provide um, you can also click the bell so you can be notified when i do make uploads also guys go to my website justmyopinion.net i have a written review for this film as well you can check me out there bookmark it um, i really would appreciate it also guys look me up on social media facebook instagram and twitter all that good stuff is right there at the bottom of your screen and i made it very easy for uh, by providing a link down in the description box below but guys, I just want to thank you again for tuning in to my opinion slash review for Justice League directed by Zack Snyder and Josh Whedon starring a whole lo uh, list of lovely characters. And before you go, don't forget that my name is Brandon Keith Avery and that's just my opinion. Peace.